It's Father Michael here on Spy Wednesday, the day before the Passover on which Judas plotted to betray our Lord for some silver. See how dark the world has become. It wasn't just anyone who turned on Jesus. It was one of the ones closest to him, one of the twelve. Normally we Christians wouldn't focus on a particular person's sin, lest we fall into judging ourselves rather than praying for her or him. But let's look at where Judas went wrong so that we will rise rather than fall. We see Jesus at table with his bread and wine. The beloved disciple leans on his breast, 10 other apostles seated around them. Usually artists include all 12 apostles at last supper scenes, but not this artist. He shows us that Jesus had finished washing their feet with the pitcher, bowl, and apron off to the side. And he wants to show us that Jesus has told them that he knows, knows that one of them will betray him, and knows that it is Judas. And that as the Gospel of John tells us, Satan entered Judas, entered him before his departure from the table of the upper room, as seen with the twelfth seat overturned in the painting's central foreground. Why would God let Satan enter him? Why would God let Satan enter into anyone? Because God doesn't. We do. We let him enter. God makes us free and gives us his strength, wisdom, and grace to not be led into temptation. Each of the twelve was tempted to betray Jesus, just as every one of us faces that greatest of all temptations, as well as all the minor ones. Jesus does all he can to help us fight temptation. We see it in the adjacent mural of the church, with Jesus washing his disciples' feet having washed the feet of Judas, ten others, and finishing up here with Peter, the most reluctant and resistant one to having it done to him. The Lord comes down to us, but nothing can force us to let him in, even when we are in the same room or church. Look at Judas, alone, plotting, separated from the others. That's what Satan must have seen before entering him. My friends, have a blessed three days. I invite you to visit our website so you can participate in the Triduum in your homes. All the information and resources are there for you. And the parish mass will be shown on Facebook and the website on Easter morning. Either way, know that Father Charles, Father Francisco, Father Joseph, and I will be praying for each one of you in these days and for our parish as we wait to be with you again. For he died and rose and he still lives. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Alpha and the Omega, the salvation of the world who lives and reigns forever and ever, amen. The videos will stop and return Easter week, the bright week, peace.